in the Cayman Islands, it's increasing human population that is harming habitats. Over half of the original environment has been destroyed. The population of the Cayman Islands is doubling every 12 years. What that means is the footprint on the land here that's taken over by humans is doubling every 12 years. This habitat reduction is disastrous for certain endemic species, such as the blue iguana. Found only on Grand Cayman, it is considered one of the most threatened species in the world. As the island's largest herbivore, the blue iguana eats large amounts of fruits and flowers, which helps to disperse plant seeds over large areas. This is vital for maintaining the island's delicate plant diversity. In 2002, we did a very detailed survey, and it was the most depressing survey I have ever been involved in, because all of the places we used to see iguanas, there were none. We think, realistically, it was probably more like 12 left in the wild, and they weren't finding each other to breed. So the population was, was doomed. It was functionally extinct, as, the, as we put it, technically speaking. They were there, but there was no future. In 2002, Frederick Burton left his job to dedicate himself to the recovery of this species. Through trial and error, he learned how to hatch baby iguanas in incubators, far from their natural predators. When they hatch, they're tiny, they're about this long, um, but they grow very, very fast. And by the time they're two years old, they're naturally predator-proof, effectively. They get too big for the native snakes. The young iguanas are given refuge at the Grand Cayman's Royal Botanical Park. Breeding adults, responsible for the proliferation of the species, are also kept here. They have a need for a lot of space. I mean, we found this out. Originally, when we built this, uh, this facility, we thought this was all we needed. Uh, and then we discovered they needed more space. We studied them in the wild, and then we found out, whoa, an animal like this would probably have uh, a territory of maybe an acre or mm -hmm. something like that. Jean, these are the cages where we have the two-year-old iguanas, the ones that we're getting ready to release into the wild. It is now time for these young iguanas to take their true place in nature. But will this new captive-born generation succeed in recolonizing Grand Cayman's weakened environment? Nice. So you will sleep there for tonight, right? Yeah. They'll be hanging in the, in the backpacks, the same backpacks we're going to take in the morning. So they'll cool down and, and they'll, be, they'll be fine. Ready to grow. After years of effort, Frederick Burton convinced the government to establish two protected areas on the island where he can now release his young iguanas. So, Jean, we are on the boundary now of uh, the Colliers Wilderness Reserve. This okay. is the protected area on, on our left now. It's not huge, but the island isn't big, yeah? Yeah. By protecting the reserve from the assault of development, Frederick Burton has protected more than just the iguanas, because dozens of other threatened species also live here. We will get rid of our packs here and, yep. uh, and we'll just take the iguana in. Here you go. Here's the box. Okay, here's the box. Oh, yes. <laughs> Whoa. So now he will spend all night inside this box. All night he will sleep in here, and in the morning, at first light, he, he will come out into this strange world. And the population has gone from about 12 now to about 650, 700, somewhere around there. 
a human initiative saved the blue iguana from extinction. Years of effort and protection have resulted in a protected area adapted to these animals' needs. Frederick Burton now hopes that these winning conditions will allow the most threatened reptile on the planet to begin breeding in the wild again.